<laughs> okay. I'm going to click continue here. Looks like Ken's got the recording going. I'm going to mute everybody and then unmute yourself, Ken. Okay, okay fine. <laughs>
God, make speed to save us. Oh, oh Lord, make, make haste to help, help us. us. Glory yes. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Again, Ed, I need you guys to unmute yourselves. Is Greg here? He is. Push it one more time, Greg. There you go. You got it. O oh Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. 
you have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. This is a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with a seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The, the word, word of, the Lord. of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 2 Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will all of you, with all of you. The Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. So with words from Richard Rohr titled Trinity Prayer, let us pray. God for us, we call you Father. God alongside us, we call you Jesus. God within us, we call you Holy Spirit. You are the eternal mystery that enables, enfolds, and enlivens all things, even us, even me. Every name falls short of your greatness and goodness. We can only see who you are in what is. We ask for such perfect seeing as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. Happy Trinity Sunday, dear ones. Today is a marking moment for me as on this day, 28 years ago, I preached my very first sermon. At the time, I was a clueless 22-year-old seminarian so excited to be speaking in a church in a real pulpit. My preaching prof professor later told me I had been played. The rector then knew what all senior clergy know, that explaining the Trinity is hard. So this is the day when we preachers often give our preaching responsibilities away to someone else. Deacon Mike, thanks for preaching last year. Most holy days celebrate an event. Jesus was born, Jesus is risen. Or they celebrate a person or a people like St. Joseph's Day, All Saints Day, but Trinity Sunday is unique because it celebrates a doctrine. Nowhere in the Bible can you or me find the word Trinity. And yet throughout history, people again and again have tried to frame and explain God as the power of three in one. The catechism of our prayer book tells us the Trinity is one God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Emily Dickinson prayed in the name of the bee and of the butterfly and of the breeze. Feminists describe God as mother, daughter, lover, and it was in the 1928 version of our prayer book when the great litany first described and christened God as creator redeemer and sanctifier. Even the New Yorker took a stab at explaining the Holy Trinity as butter, salt, and sugar. But the great theologian John Wesley said it best. Bring me a worm that can comprehend a man and I will show you a man who can comprehend the triune God. Madeline Lingle in her book, A Wrinkle in Time writes, I don't understand it any more than you do, but one thing I've learned is that you don't have to understand things for them to be. While the great Anne Lamont wrote, I didn't need to understand the hypostatic unity of the Trinity. I just need to turn my life over to whoever came up with the redwood trees. I am five decades old, and yet I do not understand many things. Good things like how my mother was told by numerous doctors she would never have children and then yet 
she adopted one birthed three, including me. I do not understand how my youngest always knows when to lay his hands on my head and pray all my cares away. <clears throat> I do not understand how many of you know just when to send a card, an email, a text, a gift that gives me the exact lift I need for my soul. I do not understand hard things too. Like why some die of COVID and others do not, why some Black Lives Matter protests have been peaceful and others not. I do not understand why everyone gets that it is wrong, does not get that it is wrong to steal, to cheat, to murder, to abuse. We all of us witness the horrors and hatefulness of this world. We do not understand. And yet we still believe. Our Genesis passage over and over again tells us that the world is essentially good. And today we profess a belief that we were created by a triune God who is for us, alongside us, and within us. We do not always understand God, but we believe in our creator God who pervades this broken world, crawls into the crevices of our suffering and lifts us up so we then can become the power of three, strengthened, sustained, and capable to serve. The best sermon on the Trinity what I ever heard was not preached by me, but by the rector of my previous parish at a chapel for three and four year olds. She had made a very simple sign of poster board and at first glance, it looked like it only had her name, but then she began to explain a Trinity truth that though each of us has only one name, we still embrace many names. It is possible to be Marjorie. Marjorie the mother, the activist, the rector, joyful, outrageous, religious, introverted, extrovert. Yet, and she showed this in all our roles, there's only one goal, to be a child of God to love and serve the Lord. Our Genesis lesson teaches us that every human being is created B'Tsalem Elohim. B'Tsalem Elohim in the image of God. I see God's image in how and what and who all of you are all the time in you who texts me and says, pray for me to hold my temper, give me strength and class with this jerk who lies and slanders me at work. I see God's image in you, in the parent who asks me, what can I do to get my child to pray better, to love God more? I see the child of God in you who as a banker doesn't just count money but fosters community relationships becomes the shoulder people cry on when their business loans aren't approved. This Trinity Sunday, dear ones, remember you are B'Tselem Elohim, holy doppelgangers of your creator. God made you 
even in this darkness, to see as God sees, to hear as God hears. And Lord, we know that this moment in time is important, that how we live, move, have our being, it matters more than ever in a nation divided because of poverty, COVID, race, frustration, and anger. Lord, help us not only to be Bitsalom Elohim, but to see every person as Bitsalom Elohim, as children of God, created in your image. Friends, you are writing a gospel, a chapter each day by the deeds that you do and the words that you say. People read what you write, if it's false or it's true. So what is the good news preached according to you? In the name of the bee, and the butterfly and the breeze. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bound together in Christ. In the, in the communion of the Holy Spirit, Spirit let us pray with one heart and mind to our God, saying, Holy Trinity, hear us. That the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all gathered here into your in life, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. For the leaders of the church and for the leaders of nations, that they may discern the ways to overcome divisions and mistrust, and may reflect your unity in every aspect of common life, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. That your self-disclosure in Christ and your enduring presence among us as a spirit may help us to understand both you and ourselves, made in your image and likeness, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. For our families, our households, and our communities, that they may be places of communion and mutual support, which build us up and strengthen us in grace and truth, we pray, Holy, Holy Trinity, Trinity, hear us. 
thankful for our world, which you made through Christ, and renewed in the power of his resurrection, that we may be wise and careful stewards of creation, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. In the power of the Spirit, who joins our prayer to Christ's enduring intercession, we pray for the sick, the suffering, and all who stand in need, for healing for all the world, we pray. Holy Trinity, hear us. Gracious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life, and make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we invite any and all to lift up prayers. Is the chat screen area. Getting used to my son's computer, so give me patience. Tammy prays, God help us during our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Thank you, Tammy. Great prayer and out of paraphrased from our own prayer book. Dwight prays for a healing for Teddy who has a precarious path ahead of him and for Kyle. Darlene prays for Jane Van Sant who just had surgery. I know there's another prayer from Ken, but I can't see it. Ken, can you type it in again? <laughs> Gail Schumann prays for us to make changes for justice, kindness, and righteousness in our country, a wonderful Trinity statement. Alan prays for Susanna and all small business owners who struggle. David says, Jane and I thank you, Marjorie, for holding the congregation together and enfolding us all to you. Thank you for that. Shelly asks for prayers for her cousin, Nathan, who is facing surgery. I ask prayers today for Susan Tonner and the power of three, which is uh, also Sue Baczynski and Christine Stevens. All three of them are on their way to Ohio for Susan to have a heart valve replacement. And she asked for your prayers this morning. Tammy prays for all forms of God. Ken Grinnell prays for Edna Ellie who is in Mexico for a stem cell transplant in a last best effort. Pray for strength for her children, Mason and Adele, and especially for her brother, Bill. Terry Everett prays to bless our black brothers and sisters. Linda Garish prays for Pat and Mary for healing. Ken Shalander prays for Ethel Shalander, who requests healing prayers for her late sister Alice's children. Trying to scroll up and having trouble seeing another prayer from Tammy. Alan prays in Thanksgiving for Emma, who now enters her teens. Christopher prays for our church family, who are in long-term care facilities. Julie prays for solace. Her heart hurts for all the COVID sick and for all our black brothers and sisters who are experiencing injustice. Are there others? I know I missed some. I'm on a foreign computer that I'm not used to. Ken prays for a time when we can all safely be together again. 
in person. Amen. Other prayers? Other prayers? I know I missed one from Tammy. Apologies for that. I continue to give thanks for our, all those in our world who are trying to show their love through peaceful protests and through speaking out, speaking for peace and justice and reconciliation. Other prayers? Prayers from Linda Garish Thomas for those ending the Black Lives Matter, especially in New Hampshire. Prayers for all those who are attending Black Lives Matter protest events that they stay safe. From Shelley Kesselman, prayers that we can listen to each other, not to refute, but to understand. May we see as God sees and hear as God hears. Any other prayers? Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in power of your divine majesty to worship the unity Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring it last to see you in your one eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see everyone today. Uh, I just have a few announcements I wanted to share with everyone. The first is an invitation to a Zoom event from one of our sister churches from St. Peter's Londonderry. Colin Chapman is the rector there, wonderful guy. I'm very good friends with him. And he invited us all to attend if you'd like to go. Um, a discussion on the film Just Mercy. Uh, it is a film about racial realities and about an actual true life reality that happened uh, a few decades ago. That event is going to take place on June 14th at 4 p.m. And if you're interested in going, just uh, either go on to the St. Peter's uh, Londonary webpage and use the email there to ask for an invite, a Zoom invite, because they don't want anyone Zoom bombing either, or just contact me and I'll put you on the list because I'm going to be attending that event. It is important if you go to the event that you watch the movie Just Mercy in advance. It's available on Netflix, on Amazon. It's very readily available. So I invite any and all to come and be a part of that discussion with uh, our sister parish in Londonderry. Uh, additionally, I wanted to make a, another card plea, a card parade plea for Susan Tonner. So if you have a pen or a piece of paper and would like to write this address down. Uh, so Susan, remember, lives at 210 Ash Street. Pretty easy to remember. 210 Ash Street in Manchester, New Hampshire, 03104. And as I mentioned in prayers, the power of three is heading to Cleveland, Ohio, to the heart center there for uh, Susan to get a heart valve transplant. And she and Sue B and Christine Stevens are all going together. So prayers for all three of them, that Trinity. And if we could all just send a card to Susan so when she gets back, she will be showered with our love. That would be wonderful. Um, one more thing I want to just add is you might have, I hope, gotten a note from me about 
what's called a donation celebration, a 24 hour blitz that's going to happen this week from New Hampshire Gives. Uh, the New Hampshire Gives platform is hosting non for profits across the uh, New Hampshire state. And basically, the New Hampshire Charitable Trust Foundation has donated a quarter of a million dollars to New Hampshire Gives. And anyone who donates through that platform in the 24 hour window of June 9th, starting at 6 to June 10th at 6 p.m., uh, if we, if we, our congregation, give up to $1,000, they will match the $1,000. So what I'm hoping is that everyone could just give a little and then we can get a lot more. So um, the platform, again, starts on June 9th at 6 p.m. And it's very easy to just type in the New Hampshire Gives website. And there's all sorts of prizes, too. Like if you decide to give a donation at 2 a.m., we might win an additional $250. So it's a really wonderful opportunity for us to gain some extra income. We've lost a fair amount of income simply because we're not in our building. People aren't putting into the plate. And of course, we didn't meet on Easter. So our usual Easter donation, which is usually helps sustain us through the year, we did not get as much. So I want to continue to thank and lift up uh, to all of you. Thank you for those of you who continue to give uh, either through our PayPal location or just mailing in a check. Thank you so much for doing that. It's helping uh, us keep alive and thrive both in the virtual world and uh, our campus as well. Um, also, uh, everyone, I know, thank you for those who did reach out to Bo, Mo and Barnaby Thomas. They would have had their wedding yesterday at Grace and that had to be canceled. So uh, if you know and love them, if you could send them a card saying, you know, uh, happy almost wedding anniversary. It's replanned for September and we hope we'll be able to get the go ahead on that we're continuing to talk about our leadership our wardens about when it is we will reopen and how we will do that safely uh so at that point i'm going to hand it over to our deacon for the dismissal let us bless the lord hallelujah hallelujah thanks be to god hallelujah hallelujah if you would like to stay for coffee hour, stay put, and we will move into breakout rooms. Not everyone on mute. Okay. Thank you all. And I did say New Hampshire cares and I meant New Hampshire gives. So thank you correcting me, those, those of you who picked that up. So coffee minute is coming. <laughs> <laughs>